Recently, I was asked a question on Facebook, how do I stop lying? Now, as men, I mean, that lying is a question we probably have all faced. We probably have all lied in some form or another. I know I have lied in different scenarios throughout my life. But it's an interesting question of why do we lie? We often instinctively do it in the moment without pausing really to think about the consequences or is this really something I do want to lie about? And to kind of pinpoint a story, I want to use the Marine Corps. Because in the Marine Corps, between Private PFC and Lance Corporal, lying is something that almost every Marine goes through because they get in trouble. They do something stupid because often Marines, that's just our nature when we're that younger of a rank. And so we always try to get our way out of it. And we're always lying to people that are expert lie detectors, but we do not have this awareness or we think we're better than they are and that we can probably manipulate this lie to make it and sell it. But in reality is, usually we don't. And usually they have a piece of information that is the thing that kills the lie and is the one piece that they were testing whether you were going to tell the truth. And in the Marine Corps, the advice that they always gave you was the truth will set you free, that the truth will always be a better path because it will have far less consequences than if you do get caught lying. And those consequences of lying are going to be even more severe because you didn't own integrity. Integrity, we've talked about in the podcast, is a core value of the Marine Corps that is baked into the very foundation. And lying is a violation of that integrity. And so it's basic foundation in the Marine Corps is that you do not lie. If you want to be a good Marine, lying is the first thing you do to erode your integrity of who you are. And so early on, if you figured out how to become a good Marine, a lot of people don't fully learn that lesson and they have to repeat that lying lesson multiple times before it actually comes down, either through a punishment or even more severe, they get in the wrong kind of trouble. And even worst case scenario, they get a dishonorable discharge because maybe they just still never really figured it out. And so to this PFC Lance Corporal or private, lying is something that they learned that the truth will set you free. But to that analogy as well, they're often basically hiding something because they don't want it to be shown. So they use lie to change the truth, change what they can believe so they can kind of hide what they did because maybe they feel shameful. Maybe they've got a hangover like, what did we do last night kind of thing? Maybe it's like the hangover, the movie in Vegas where they have no idea and they're just trying to survive and get their way through because in reality, they probably don't have any idea. Let's change the channel on this and think about lying at work. Now, most people that lie at work eventually get caught. Karma is very good usually at work. And if you're truly lying about something and changing and submitting different truth, the truth will always set you free. And in those cases, even if you use the worst case scenario like Enron, who is lying forever about their basic structure and financials of their organization or anything in through 2008 where there was this deceit to the system, the system always catches up with them. But what about those moments where you're not lying, but you're just kind of repositioning the truth? You're trying to make sure someone only sees a portion of the truth and you're hiding the bad portion. You know what I'm talking about because here's your classic example. That executive that creates a PowerPoint that shows all the rosy areas of the company that yes, this company is doing amazing. We've got good things going on, but maybe he's leaving out the red things, the things that had someone else known about this or the board of directors who's ever getting this presentation, they are like, whoa, we need to go check that out. We need to put the brakes on something because this is a moment that really changes your perception of lying because if you can accept or if you believe you can accept this idea of altering the truth to a version that's pleasurable, to a version that is acceptable, then you start doing it in other areas. And it's not necessarily that feels like lying. You're just trying to be a salesman to sell this version of an alternative truth. There is a story that I will never forget from reading the book American Icon, which is the story of how Alan Mulally saved Ford Motor Company and held off getting a government bailout from the government, unlike GM and Chrysler. And there's a moment that they talk about in that book where early on when he first took over the company, They were doing these executive meetings all across the globe. Everybody would have to dial in, no matter whether you were in Europe, Japan, or United States. And they would talk about red, yellow, and green lights of different areas in the business. And almost everybody prior to Alan coming would throw only green lights because you knew, and everybody in the room knew, that if you put a red light up there, you were sure is going to be fired 
for telling the truth. So there was a culture of deceit. There was a culture of misrepresenting the truth to make sure that only the people could see what they needed to see. And it created a bunch of yes men, essentially. And there's a story that Alan says where the Ford Escape was having trouble getting launched and it was going to be delayed by about three months. And the executive in charge of this went into that office, did a red thing and said, I'm stopping production on the Ford Escape. We are not launching it on target. And this is why this is what we're doing. And everybody else in the room thought this man is sure is done. You'd never do that in the old Ford. You would have gotten fired. And Alan was like, great. Now we have a problem. Now we can focus our energy on it. And now we can find a solution. He remembers and quotes that moment as the day that he said that he could fix Ford Motor Company. Because if they were willing to bring the truth to a situation, if they were willing to acknowledge even the ugliest of truths, we could collectively fix it. And what I want you to think about as I frame that story is think about when you hide some portion of the truth, you're preventing the collective energy from resolving it. You are not acknowledging that there is a problem there. How many men walk around with lying to themselves? They've got together. Meanwhile, on the inside, it's a hot mess. This analogy can really go in a lot of different ways. But let's circle back to the original question. Why do we lie? I want to bring two definitions when you ask Google, why do we lie, that it showed me. First one, we lie to save face, to avoid hurting other people's feelings, to impress others, to shirk responsibility, and to hide misdeeds as a social lubricant, to prevent conflict, to get out of work, and many, many more reasons. Another alternative provided more tied to parenting. The main reason people lie is low self-esteem. They want to impress. Please tell someone they want that they want to hear. For example, insecure teenagers often lie to gain social acceptance. Here, your parents can help emphasize to the children the consequences of lying. There are so many threads to lying, but it is consciously a good exercise to think about what are the lies that you've done and why have you done them? What was your intention? And what was the result through time and the lens of time? What did the consequence of that lie have? Now, you can see that in different ways. Like, did your life take a different course because you lied? Did you have to rebound two years later because of something that you held and covered up early on? Whatever it may be, my theory on why we lie is to essentially create an alternate reality. We want to create reality that's more acceptance to the one that we're seeing in. And it, to me, it's that moment when we realize why we're lying we realize that there's probably something we need to grow through because often, or another way to say this is to focus on the light and the darkness that we've talked about that usually in your psyche, if there's this darkness, this area in your life that you've never really acknowledged, understood, developed your brain, your ego is wired to keep you alive. Lying is a way for you to keep that method going and to keep that lie moving. And so think about this. When you lie, think about what truth Am I not acknowledging that I need to? And what thing do I need to change or take action on so that lying isn't something that I feel I need to do to protect myself? Because at its core, it is a protection mechanism. It's to protect us from some consequence that we feel is an existential crisis to who we are. Now, and depending on how old you are, whether you're 20, 30, or 40, or even 50, 60, or 70, your brain has a long period of time focused on that survival. And so the longer you're alive, the longer you've been avoiding something, the more your brain has been secretly coded to keep that truth hidden and your brain lying to keep that fu future aligned with who you've always been. So the older you are, the harder it is to kind of break this cycle, to break this pattern. And that's another way to frame it. As the longer you've been in the pattern, the longer it is it's going to take you to break it. This was a longer rant, but this was a question... That kind of opened up a whole new thoughts, a lot of different ways to take it. I would love to hear your response. If you want to let me know, send me an email, ben at bencolloy.com, or you can hit me up on LinkedIn, search my name, Ben Colloy. All of those links are also down in the show notes as well. Guys, that is all I have for you today, and I'll be back again with you guys tomorrow.